Um, and moving forward, uh, the, the junior class will then take the SAT in the spring semester as both their graduation requirements and as a college entrance exam. Um, the PSAT uh, is also given to the junior class uh, in order to qualify students for the National Merit Scholarship. Um, so uh, I guess, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look up some information. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what else did you want to know about the PSAT? Yeah. Or SAT? The importance of taking the PSAT and how that can contribute and add to one's uh, what do you call it? Prospective chances of getting additional scholarships, and you nailed it in terms of talking about the net merit scholarships that are available. If yes. The SAT yeah. is taken. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to look. I had a question. Do you guys have the scores from last year's PSAT? I believe Ms. Gibson gave those to Ms. Chavez, to Sandy Chavez. And that's a great question. Anytime a student, if you're not sure what your scores are, contact one of us and we could look into the power school system to see if your scores have been recorded. And we will be able to provide those scores for you. And within that question, thank you, Ms. Gonzalez, is some mm -hmm. of the schools that you're applying to right now are gonna be asking for those scores we can provide the score report to the university. And in order for VHS to provide your SAT, ACT, or PSAT scores for scholarships or university admissions purposes, there is a link as well on the count. There's a lot of links on Counseling Canvas. In Counseling Canvas, you're gonna see under the academics section again, the page called transcripts click on transcripts and it'll take you to a link where you're gonna complete some information regarding where you want us to send the certain information. So you're gonna provide the address of where you would want us to mail either a transcript, official, unofficial, as well as in the comments you would write, please send my ACT scores, my PSAT scores, whatever scores we do have on file. Any other questions regarding testing and what we would be able to have or generate the score reports for you? And if, we, if you don't contact us, you can also contact ACT or SAT or ACT directly, and they can also forward the score reports to the universities as well. I, I do have a question, Dr. Olguin. Yeah. If my daughter's going to be taking the ACT this Saturday coming up, and I did give her a couple of those booklets to practice. Is there anything else that would help her with the test other than going through the, the practice tests and using, the, of course, the calculator, you know, those, um, the only calculators that are allowed during the testing? Correct. Any, any other suggestions for that? Yes, and that's a beautiful segue into the note part of this uh, presentation that we're giving you all today. Let me screen share these notes. And there is this website here I encourage you all to go to because it will give you an, a, a slew, so much more information in terms of how to prepare and what to prepare. So let me share screen here. So before where we're at today, before the test, we want you all, what Ms. Arona was asking is familiarize yourself with the test. If you're gonna be taking the ACT or the SAT, and even if you're not sure, should I take the SAT or the ACT? We'll get into that here in a bit. This, the website, do you, is it, do you see my page scrolling? Yes. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna see this website right here, HTTPS blog prep scholar. It's also in the counseling canvas. If you wanna just click on it, it'll take you to this blog. And on there is a quiz that you could take. It's a really quick quiz. You answer it if like, I think it's if you agree or disagree and it'll tell you which test would be best suited for you. 
And another thing is within the past couple of years, some universities were very strict in terms of we want an ACT, so you should take the ACT to meet the requirement. Within the past couple of years, they've come up with an ACT SAT conversion chart where if you are best suited for one exam, we encourage you to take the exam that you're best suited for. And when I say best suited for, meaning what is your, which test is best for your learning style? So we, you could take that one test and then you could, use, they will, the university will use a conversion chart. For example, if you take the ACT, say you get um, an 18, a 20, whatever the score is, they will look at the score that you got on the ACT on the chart and it'll give them an SAT score that you would have gotten if you took the SAT. So that's another thing to check with your university. Will they use the conversion chart if you've already taken an ACT? And I know some of the students in here, you've already taken the ACT at last year's boot camp, So you may not even have to take an ACT or SAT over again. But I know some students like to take it again to try to get a higher score. And as we go through this presentation, I'm going to show you what the last numbers were in terms of what you should get only on the ACT to get guaranteed scholarships within New Mexico universities. So again, this website right here, blogprepscholar.com, it's a fantastic resource to help you determine ACT or SAT, which one you should take. And it also gives a slew of other information in terms of additional colleges and universities that do require or do not require the SAT or ACT. And that's for this year only. It was last year as well, but last year's over. So this year, there are still many universities and colleges that do not require. They, what they call, they waive that requirement. But again, if, even if they waive the requ uh, requirements, some scholarships may say, we want to know what your score was. So you may want to take either test regardless if it's a waived requirement or not. Hmm. So for the Dr. Rose, yes, no, no, go for it. I was just gonna gonna say that um, I looked up uh, the PSAT uh, test dates uh, because of COVID. They've created a January test date for juniors who take to qualify for national merit. So if we have any juniors interested in taking the PSAT. Uh, we would be able to, to give that test again in January in order to qualify them for the, for the National Merit Scholarship. Fantastic, thank you. And so juniors, are, do, you, are, do you think we may be offering it to the entire class or those who request? Uh, in the past, the district has purchased the tests for the entire sophomore class and then the juniors would have to pay if they wanted to take it for their own qualifying for scholarships. That's right, that's right. So juniors, if there are any juniors in here, if you are interested to shoot for the National Merit Scholarships, at, at the bottom of these notes are, is my email address. Send me an email to say that you are interested and we'll, I'll begin generating a list of your names so we can get the test ordered for you for January. Back to the, before the test, as we mentioned, familiarize yourself with both tests through the internet, use the internet to look for free uh, preparation materials. I know in the counseling office, it's a little tough because we're not on campus now, but we can be on campus. If you're the type of individual that wants a paper test, practice test, we have boxes, two big cases that we just got in, I wanna say the past couple of weeks of practice test materials. So get in touch with one of the counselors to make sure we're gonna be there or to give, get one of those study guides to give to the front office and you can swing by the school to pick it up or Miss Arona, if you have any ideas, we can send out. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna chime in on that. Um, what, what I can do is I can go over to your office and grab a stack and then just keep them up here. So if kids wanna drive up and pick up, they just call the front office and then I can, we can just run it out to them. Oh, fantastic. So again, those of you that like a, a hard paper copy of a version, I'm still that way studying off the internet and the computer, mm -hmm. I still need some physical, I'm a tang tangential type of learner. So I need to have something in hand to study. So if you're that type of learner, please get in touch with Miss Arona at 565-8755. Yes, sir. Yes, and let her know that you'd like to swing by for a test, uh, practice test booklet, and we'll have those ready for you. 
Yep. The third thing on before the test, begin organ begin time time management skills. Set time aside each week to practice different test strategies to pra actually do the practice test. And when you do the practice test, it's very important to time yourself. I'm old school, we have an egg timer, but on all of your cell phones now, you have alarms that you could set the time there. With the ACT and the, with both ACT and SAT, they are timed tests. One difference that ACT is you have fewer seconds per item to answer. The ACT gives you a few more seconds to answer per item. I talked about take the ACT practice test. Get friends together to study. And on the notes in Counseling Canvas, there are parentheses next to get friends together to study. Practice social distancing. Do keep in mind the precautions for social distancing. Keep up with your homework that are, is given to you right now in your core classes. Even if you have an elective, keep up with your elective classes, but your core classes are going to help you prepare you for the test that you're gonna be taking. We encourage students, which I don't think a lot of students do, but we want more students to do is ask your, math, your English, math and science teachers for help to prepare you for the test. They will take time of their schedule. I know Ms. Gonzalez, she's taken lots of her time to help students prepare for these different tests. And if you need help in terms of, well, I don't know what to talk, tell to, at, excuse me, I don't know what to say to my teacher, get in touch with one of the counselors and we'll help prepare you in terms of how to communicate with your teacher and give you materials to present to your teacher so your teacher can help. And in that, in terms of materials, we also at VHS through APEX. Some of you have heard of APEX, some of you have not. It's a two-year new program like Canvas. It's, I don't know what you call this, a platform, but it's a, APEX is a platform that we use to help students prepare. We can also put your name into APEX for ACT and SAT preparation. So you can, on your own time, go through the exam and the study guide materials that VHS offers. So please use our emails addresses to let us know to put your name on either one or both. And we'll, well, actually you all are already in the ACT to prepare for the state standardized test. But if you would like to be put on the ACT, let us know, send us an email and we'll get you registered in there. And we will let you know how to access APEX because you will use your own username and password that you use to log into your MacBook use the same information to log in to Clever to get to Apex, and then you will see the ACT and the SAT study materials available for you. Back to time management organization, utilize that timer. When it's over, it's over. With both tests, I know specifically with the ACT, you don't get penalized if you don't answer a question. You just won't get the points, but you will not be deducted any points for not answering. So utilize that timer to help you pace yourself according to how many seconds you need per question. And that website I mentioned earlier, that blog prep scholar will tell you exactly to the second of how many seconds you have to answer each item, each question. Identify right now, because when you complete the, like the demographic sheet before you even take the test, ACT and SAT will ask you, what colleges are you interested in? And once you write the colleges there and the codes, and once you finish, they score your exam, they will automatically send your results to the universities. So if you have an idea of which universities you are interested in, they will give you a section there of, of listing the universities so they can automatically send your score reports to the universities. And last but not least, very important, if you do not sleep well, begin finding methods, and you can get in touch with the counselors, begin finding methods on how to, to learn how to get a good night's sleep. Because if the brain is not rested, anxiety will go up. Anxiety is good for the human. Too much anxiety could debilitate us, could make us freeze. The day of your test, be prepared. Be present, make sure you, you're well rested. 
the day of the test can also be infuriating for some students because of what's happening now in society with COVID. There are students who have registered for the exam, but then right before the test, they get a notification that it's been canceled. So that can be frustrating for you. Get in touch with us. We will help you with finding some relaxation techniques because that's something that is beyond all, any of our control. We cannot control when these companies cancel a test right before the test. And when you do a, register for it, you will get more than likely an email notification that the test has been canceled. And if you do get a canceled test, they will reschedule you and let you know when the rescheduled date and time is going to be. Do have a current photo ID. If it's a driver's license, if it's a New Mexico state ID, and we've had one student this year contact the counseling office and we were able to reprint his old school ID from last year with your last year's picture on it. So if you cannot find an ID, let us know and we will get last year's picture ID, picture ID. scheduled, uh, not scheduled, printed for you. And again, we'll give it to Miss Arona and you can get in touch with her and make arrangements to come and pick up that ID. Because if you do not have an ID, you will not be allowed into the test. Yeah. And finally, relaxation techniques. A lot of people over or underestimate the power of slow, deep breathing. It is about calming your brain down. It's about really the body. And within that, taking slow, deep breaths, do your best to not stress out. These tests, they, we see them as high stakes tests and that in itself thinking about a high stakes test, well, it's reliant on my admission to universities. It's reliant if I'm gonna get scholarships, those are stressful. But rem remind yourself, you can always retake a test. And specifically with the ACT, if you do apply or qualify for free or reduced lunch through VHS, through the counseling office, you can take the ACT up to two times for free. So you would, that information is in Counseling Canvas as well in terms of how to get in touch with Ms. Traganos to get a, what they call an ACT waiver number. So let's get into some of the content, the meat of these tests. So basically what is the ACT is gonna be very similar yet different to the SAT. Both of them are standardized tests that are supposed to, and I say supposed to because I'm in my previous career, I'm a researcher, and we, I'll tell you later about the data we have found. Both of them are supposed to pr help predict if you're ready to complete and do college level coursework. That's all it's saying. It's not saying you're smart, you're not smart. It's just saying, do you, are you at the stage of having the ability to complete coursework? You may not be right now when you take this test, but by the time you finish this semester or this school year, you may be ready. That's all it's saying. So the ACT is, has four different parts to it. It has the English, reading, math, and science. That's gonna be different. The SAT does not include the science component. Within the ACT right here, you. The math component includes algebra, geometry, and some trigonometry. The SAT test only includes algebra on the test. So if you have a hard time with geometry, trigonometry, right there, you would be more encouraged to take the SAT as opposed to the ACT. But if, if geometry, trigonometry is no problem for you, the ACT may be the test for you to take. ACT, you have to select, they give you a selection of up to five options that you have to choose. You read a question, then you have to select A, B, C, D, or E. The SAT only gives you four options to choose from, as well as the SAT, you may have to give the answer based on what your knowledge is. They're not gonna give you any options. So SAT, for every question, they give you five options to choose from. And the SAT is scored between, you can get a one up to 36 points. The top um, score is a 36. And I know this morning I was looking at the Air Force Academy 
So look at the university that you're interested in and see what is the average ACT score that a student gets or ACT or SAT score a student gets for that university. For example, I was looking at the Air Force Academy website this morning. The average SA, ACT score that a student incoming freshman at the Air Force Academy gets is a 30. That's just for the Air Force Academy. Don't let that scare you. There are some individuals who score an 18 and still get into top universities because universities, they look at all these different components to what creates the student. So don't think, oh, just my GPA is not strong enough or my ACT score is not high enough. Still apply because you may have strengths that they look at through your entire application that could still get you admitted into the university. So do not let minimum requirements deter you from applying. Still apply to the university that you're interested in. So again, here's that blog, blog prepscholar.com. They, they will give you a chart on this um, blogscholar.com that will compare the ACT and SAT in more detail than what we're providing for you today. So in general, continuing with the ACT, when you go take the exam, they're gonna begin with instructions. The first, then the first test is gonna be a 45 minute test based on English. The second test is gonna be an hour long based on reading. Then you will get a break after those two exams. After the break, you come back for tests three and four. Test three is a 35 minute math test and test four is a 35 minute science test. So going down the notes, I broke this down uh, into detail. So you could work with your English teachers and if you're gonna take the ACT to help you in, like for example, English skills. There are 75 questions on the test for English. They're gonna be looking at the production of your writing ability, topic development, organization, unit, unity and cohesion of sentence structure, your knowledge of the language, conventions of English, sentence structure, formation, punctuation, and usage of punctuation. Science skills, are four, there are 40 questions and they're gonna look at your ability to interpret the data from hypotheses testing and so forth. The sci, utilizing the scientific method for investigation and evaluating different models and experimental results. Your math skills are gonna prepare you obviously for higher math, which is going to be your basic algebra and basic mathematics. Geometry, statistics and probability and integrating essential skills as well as modeling. Reading skills is gonna be broken down into 40 questions or you're gonna to have to assess and give answers regarding key ideas and details based on what the questions are asking. How you craft and structure, how you're able to look at certain reading passages and answer those questions regarding those and the integration of knowledge and ideas based on the questions they give you. Moving down into the college and university ready scores, this is what I wanna say the average. And when I say average university, I don't mean they're like lower than, no, no. It's just the average of all universities together. This is what they're looking for. They're looking for students who in English can get an 18, science can get a 23, math a 22, and reading a 22. Those are just what they're looking for. But again, if you score below that, don't let that stop you from applying because you will have other strengths that will help comp um, make up for some of these scores that may not be at that level. Now, coming and taking a look here specifically at UNM, New Mexico State, New Mexico Tech, and Eastern New Mexico, our those four universities here in uh, New Mexico, for example, UNM, if you get a 22 or higher, that automatically qualifies you, well, with a GPA as well, will qualify you for specific scholarships. That's guaranteed money that you do not have to pay back. GP, Last, I get down, lay down, go ahead on. The, uh, if you get a 22 on the ACT, which there may be a typo <coughs> because 
there are different scholarships, but the information where I got this from, it starts at a 23. So I'm not sure why they have the average score of 21, but then the bridge scholarship at UNM is guaranteed if you get a 23 ACT score and you have at least a 3.5 GPA when you graduate high school, you will be automatically guaranteed and given $1,500 a year for tuition, books, however you want to use that which most of the time and nowadays schools are automatically applying that to your tuition. But then if tuition is not that much, you will get a check from them for the difference. The presidential scholarship at UNM, they want you to score a, have a 25 minimum on the ACT and at least a 3.75 GPA in your high school career. If you meet those criteria, you will automatically be guaranteed $8,934 a year. New Mexico State, looking scholarship at the A Mountain, they're looking to see if you can get a 21 on your ACT and a 2.7 GP, GPA for $1,500 a year. Presidential scholarship is if you get a 28 or higher on your ACT and you have a 3.75 GPA. You get full tuition paid for the year plus $3,250 on top of that to spend. In addition, you get one year of housing for New Mexico State. And the one year of housing will be on New Mexico State dormitories, student housing. New Mexico Tech, the average score of the student going to New Mexico Tech gets, about a, gets a 26 on their ACT. But if you get a 23 on your ACT and a 3.0 GPA, there's the Cooper Scholarship that is, you can get up to four years for $2,000 a year. The Presidential Scholarship at New Mexico Tech is if you get a 27 or higher on the ACT and score and have a 3.25 GPA, you're guaranteed $4,000 a year. Eastern New Mexico University, a 20 on the ACT will get you tuition and fees paid for one full year at Eastern. In addition, there's the Green and Silver Presidential Scholarship for those students who get a 27 or higher or a 25 plus a 3.5 GPA. And again, that 3.5 GPA will come from VHS. Then if you can meet those requirements, you will get full tuition and fees plus an extra thousand dollar spending money. In addition, one year of free housing. So that's what the ACT can offer you. And there's a lot more that the ACT can offer, but we're not going to be covering today. So let's move on to the SAT. We've ta I've talked a little bit about the differences between the two. Again, it's a standardized test that's going to help tell the universities if you're at the stage of, and uh, if you have the ability to be ready to complete college level work. Mentioned earlier, the S ACT has science, the SAT does not include a science test. So if you're not strong on science, you may want to take the SAT as opposed to the ACT. Some answer choices are given, and then there are some questions where you're going to have to provide the answer choice. Some people say if you have the gift of gab, if you're able to process and talk that to um, find a solution, the SAT may be a better test for you. Some students get deterred. They, get to, they don't want to take the ACT because it is slightly longer than the ACT. But when I say slightly, it's only a few minutes longer and a few more questions longer than the ACT. But you, as well as the multiple choice, instead of the ACT giving you five choices to choose from, the SAT gives you four choices to choose from. So if you're not sure in terms of what the answer is, you could look at the question, the options and find out what the answer is not. So if you find out what the answer is not, that's one method and one strategy to help you find out what the answer is. Does that make sense? Again, go to that blogprepscholar.com to uh, get a more in-depth and detailed side-by-side -side difference of the exams to find out which one is best for you. Again, taking out, find out which test is right for you. Take different practice tests. We have a practice test 
for the ACT, the paper version, the booklet, but we also have via APEX, the ACT and SAT practice materials for you. So I would encourage you to utilize both to see which one you do better on. I know another thing, the ACT will give you questions that are out of order. Like say you're doing a read, you're reading a passage and they're gonna ask you questions based on what you read. They may ask you question about the end of the story before the beginning of the story. The SAT will only ask questions that come in chronological order. For example, they will ask you based on what you read, what happened at the beginning, then what happened in the middle and what happened at the end. The ACT may ask you first after you read a passage, what happened in the middle, then what happened at the end, then what at the beginning. So if, you're, if you are a type of learner that you are organized and your brain works in an organized fashion, the SAT may be best for you. Any questions? Can I ask a question about the FAFSA? Yes, please. So if, so I already applied for it, but how, or like when would I know um, what, like if I got something and if I accepted it, how would I put it towards um, the college? Great question. Ms. Montgomery, if you'd like to chime in here. Okay. Um, you should receive a report back pretty much immediately after you submit your FAFSA. Um, that, let me look up the name of it, um, that gives you an estimate of, of how much you should qualify for, but the, then you then have your FAFSA information sent to the different college campuses you're applying to, and they then return with an aid packet for their specific university to you detailing how much money you uh, would need and how much you qualify for on their specific campus. So within the FAFSA application, you're able to add the schools that you want your FAFSA information sent to, and then they generate uh, your financial aid packet based on their school uh, tuition and costs and things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I know some scholarships you apply for, they want you to apply for FAFSA or have applied for FAFSA and may ask a couple of questions regarding what did you qualify for? They're not saying that you have to accept the money from the university. And I encourage you all, do not sign any paperwork saying that regarding any loans, just apply, wait for the university, wait for FAFSA to respond. Then the universities get your information, they send it to you. Utilize, some of the scholarships may want you to provide some of the data that you got just so they can determine your financial need in terms of if you do qualify and meet the criteria for their scholarship. Every student gets a different amount of scholarships. Does that fair? No, it should be the same amount, but some scholarships will base it only on need. So FAFSA will be important in that respect for just scholarship purposes that are not related to the university. And I know with if you do get FAFSA information as well as scholarships, they send those, is it the bursar's office or financial aid office? They will send the school your money and then the school will take out what is needed for tuition or fees. And if there is an over, if there's an amount that you still have left in your account at the university, it's up to the university. Some universities will give you that money in one check or some will give it to you in pieces. So that's something you may want to check with with the university is if you do have excess money in scholarships or financial aid, how is that distributed to you? And again, each university will be different. And you, sorry. I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, you should be able to, it's gonna be called your SAR, S-A-R, um, student aid report. You should be able to view that uh, pretty much immediately after you submit your FAFSA um, if you log on to your My FAFSA page, um, it'll, it will be there. But then again, you'll get different information from individual college campuses based on tuition and fees at their campus. Okay, thank you.
Adeseli, Flores Ramirez, yes, a great question. Is there a way we can get a waiver for the ACE, for the SAT? Yes, there is, and I will provide that information. I know in the past, SAT has sent us waiver forms, waiver cards, very similar to the ACT, where there's a number that you provide on that. We have not received any for this academic year, so let me get in touch with SAT to find out how we can get some waivers for the students, and we will post that on Counseling Canvas. Because right now, on Counseling Canvas, you go to Academics, you're going to see under Academics, ACT Waiver. We will create an SAT waiver once we get the information. Great question. Um, I have a question about if UNM like um, requires any college essays or like any of the scholarships that UNM provides. Because like I've seen their like website with the scholarships and like I like tried to go to the financial aid department and it says that you it, they're not really essays but they're like short answer questions so like do we have to do that for UNM or like financial aid at UNM for some scholarships I know at UNM for 12 years I sat on within a scholarship board there a scholarship committee within the college of Edu within the college of education and with the scholarships that we that we offer to students within the College of Education, we did require what they call a personal statement. It's an essay. And great question, Alyssa, regarding how do you write an, a, a personal statement? You know what I'm gonna say back on Counseling Canvas, within the, you know what? I'm not even sure what module. Are you aware if it's under career development? In Counseling Canvas, let me go to an all screen share. Within Counseling Canvas, we do have examples of how to write personal statements. And counselors, we will work individually as well. We can even host a personal statement talk, like one of these workshop series, to help you walk through the process and how to organize a personal statement. So definitely, I would encourage you all, even if a, your university does not require, I would encourage you to have one ready because many scholarships will want you to write a personal statement. And some people say, well, what is a personal statement? It's pretty much a little, it's an autobiography of who are you as a person? What have you done to contribute in terms of community service? How have you helped your school out? They're wanting to know at your young age, what have you done? It does, it's not like, it's different from a resume. Some people think, well, do I need to have a paid job? No, you don't have to have a paid job. What start thinking, what have you done that in terms of volunteer work within your community? What have you done in terms of volunteer work here at your at the VHS? Some of you may have been in student council and then all these different activities, prom committee, homecoming committee, uh, you're an athlete. How many years were you an athlete? Like yesterday, we had two students volunteer to make a video. They will be able to utilize that in terms of their contribution back to Valencia High School. By making a video. So that's what a personal statement is, is they're wanting to know who are you and what have you done and where do you want to go in life? And how, why is it we should give you our money? So basically you're providing a picture for them of who you are, but through words. So I am looking through real quick on Counseling Canvas to find out where those Okay, I'm going to scream. Under, oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to say, I believe it's under the career development. Exact. That's exactly where I found it. So when you go to the career development module, scroll down, you're going to see sample resumes. Some scholarships are going to ask you as well as submit a resume. As well, counselors, we're here to help you with resumes and personal statement development. So the first few pages are about resumes. After, when you get to the fifth page, is it? One, two, three, four, fifth page. Here are some sample personal statements for you to look at. So there's one personal statement example, a second and a third. So there are three different pages specifically 
targeting how to write a personal statement. And then there are written personal statements in there to give you an idea of how to process, reflect, and think about what you've done. What you Because a lot of people forget about services they've offered, even for religious, even like if you belong to a church or some religious organization, you may have had a fundraiser. That's, about, that's community service that you provided that they want to hear about. Because what they're doing, scholarships, they're wanting, what they're looking for is to determine, does this individual meet our criteria? And are, should we invest our money in this person? Because you're going to serve as a representative for that scholarship entity, organization, or yeah, for that scholarship whatever the scholarship is from, you're going to be representing them because they're going to start utilizing you. Some may even want you to come and do a talk once in a while. I know at UNM, whenever we would offer students scholarships, we would have a scholarship night where the students who received a scholarship would come and just say a few words, a few sentences about how the scholarship has helped them. So when you're applying and you get this, get the monies, think about it that you are now a representative for that organization who just offered you a scholarship. Great questions, keep these questions coming. Um, I also have a question about uh, how we access our, like how we order a official college transcript, like at least from, if we took classes from the VC, how would we, how would we do that? Excellent. So, if I recall, Ms. Montgomery, please chime in here. What you have to do is contact the registrar's office at the UNM Valencia campus. More than likely, you can go to valencia.unm.edu and order it online as opposed to having to go in person. And then yeah. you find the order transcript, you complete that information, and that's where you can give the addresses and locations of where you want those official transcripts to be sent. And I know for some of you here at Valencia, you, you may need your high school transcript, your official transcript sent to college admissions committees on counseling canvas under, is it academics? Yes, I'll screen share here. Under academics, you're going to scroll down and look at, look for the fourth one that's titled transcripts. Click on transcripts. You're going to click on this link and it'll take you to the VHS web page. Is it, are the new pages loading? Excellent. So you click on that and it'll take you to the Valencia High School web page and you just fill in the information here, your name, date of birth, graduation, student ID. Then you're gonna click type of delivery. Are you gonna pick it up or do you want the school to mail it out? And what type of transcript are you looking for? Unofficial or official? And if you're not sure, go back to the school website or your scholarship that you're looking at because some scholarships may want a transcript as well. And then you, for College University One, or if it's a scholarship, just type in the name of the organization and then the address. So you could do up to two different mail outs to two different universities or two different scholarship entities. And if a scholarship, if a university is wanting, say your ACT scores that we have, here in your comments section at the bottom, type in, please include my ACT scores. Please include, if you're a part of QuestBridge, they may want to look at your PSAT scores. So in the comments, type specifically what other additional information that we can provide to College University One or College University Two. Are those transcripts like physically like paper or do they send them also just like as a one through the computer? I believe we provide uh, paper yes. mm -hmm. and on the outside or on the inside, I'm not sure, but there's a specific marking that says it's official. Yes. There official. Are, go for it. No, no, go for it, Ms. Montgomery. Uh, official just means that it's uh, 
uh, signed, sealed, stamped, and sent without tampering. <laughs> so you can request an electronic copy. It's just it's just how you request it. If you put in a physical address, we're going to send a paper copy. If there's a an email address, we'll send an electronic cop copy. But typically, an official transcript is going to be mailed uh, with the seal and signature from the registrar. Oh, when can we apply for the lottery scholarship? Okay. Um, you do not apply for lottery. Uh, you qualify for lottery. Um, the bridge scholarship is, is what you would need to apply for um, in preparation for qualifying for the lottery. So the way this works is in your first semester of college, that is when you qualify for lottery for the second and then following semesters. So to qualify for lottery, you have to be a full-time student, which means 15 college credit hours, and you have to maintain a 2.5 GPA. And then after that first semester, you would just need to talk to your financial aid office to make sure uh, that you do qualify. And then you should automatically get the lottery scholarship for uh, your next semesters, as long as you continue being a full-time student and continue maintaining a 2.5 GPA. Um, bridge scholarship is what bridges you from high school graduation to lottery, right? It's, it's a scholarship available for your first semester of college before you qualify for lottery. Um, each New Mexico university, um, our college is able to use their bridge money in different ways and name it different things. And so that's a bit confusing whenever you're applying. Take for instance, at New Mexico State, it's not called bridge scholarship. It's just money used for their uh, in-state uh, scholarships that you qualify for based on your ACT scores and your GPA. So if I'm, if I'm applying to New Mexico State, I automatically qualify for bridge money, but it's named like Pete's scholarship or a level of scholarship you qualify for based on your ACT scores and your GPA. But at CNM and UNM Valencia, they actually have an application for the bridge scholarship. At Eastern New Mexico, it's just the freshman academic scholarship. It's not called bridge there either. So you will have to do a bit of research um, at each of the New Mexico universities or colleges that you apply for to make sure that you are giving your chance or yourself the chance to qualify for bridge. But then lottery is, is a qualification based off of your first semester uh, GPA and if you are a full-time student. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of words. <laughs> and using a lot of words, there are in, there are details. A lot of details is uh, there are a lot of details to complete admission packets, FAFSA packets, as you all are experiencing. Apply for scholarships. All these details are what scare a lot of people away from even going to college. So please do your best to continue to forge forward. Let us ask us for assistance because we do not want you to be scared by the process. The process itself can be frightening. And a big percentage, very big percentage of, of individuals do not even go forward because of the process or processes that are involved in applying for admission, for scholarships, for FAFSA, and so forth. So let us ask us how we can help prepare you to not be afraid of these processes. So I'm going to share one last thing before we end here. And as I'm sharing, I'd like for students think about any last questions you have. And if we, when we do end and you do have questions, please don't hesitate. Email us questions. So the last thing we, I want to share with you all that is in the Canvas um, link for today's talk are different source, different sites of where you could look for scholarship money. We've talked a little bit about these already. I want to go through. Definitely, we mentioned go to Counseling Canvas, go to the Senior Canvas, 
And then through Counseling Canvas, you can go to the VHS website. Additional uh, locations to begin to get free accounts are at fastweb.com, scholarships.com, university of choice. That means be, get an idea of which universities you're, you would like to apply to, or if you've already applied, go to those universities and begin looking for scholarships. Now here's where it can become like a tangled web. Within each university, they have different colleges. For example, there's the College of Education, the College of Fi uh, Fine Arts, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Engineering, the College of Athletics, whatever degree you're going to, it'll tell you what college that you're going to be applying to within the university. So you're gonna to wanna to, uh, look at the websites as well as even call because I know at UNM, we, we had scholarships that we did not post. We expected students to find out through word of mouth and then call us to ask which ones we had. Then we would give them information. So say if, you're, if you wanna get a degree in psychology, more than likely you're gonna be in the College of Arts and Sciences. So not, and say you wanna to go to UNM, you're gonna look at UNM webpage. And then within the UNM webpage, you're gonna look at the College of Arts and Sciences as well for additional scholarships. Definitely look at any of the financial aid offices within the universities that you're applying, as well as Christmas music. This is good to get us in the cheery mood here. <laughs> you're going to want to look at any of um, your state government websites. For example, here in, at the state of New Mexico.gov, take a look at the website and look for scholarships. One thing I didn't write here, also look for grants. Grants are scholarship monies that you do not have to pay back. Be careful if you apply for a loan, you do have to pay back loans. So we want our students to be, encourage you to apply for scholarships and grants that are available. And through NewMexico.gov, you can look to see what's available, as well as a government, another government website here is New Mexico Public Education Department. And within the Public Education Department, there's also another one called the Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education. The Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education gave me $40,000 a year to become a doctor, to get my PhD. So there's a lot of monies out there if you're willing to apply for them. So also specific politicians may have some scholarships available. So again, List of organizations, companies, check if your parents, uh, uh, with your parents' employer, a guardian's employer, some um, companies, place of employment may also have scholarships for you. Bottom line, you're going to have to do a lot of research. It's time consuming, but it's definitely worth it when you start seeing your, your totals adding up in terms of scholarship monies. That's all I had to share in terms of the notes that I had generated and prepared for you all. Any last questions before we call it a day here? Um, when and where are we going to be taking the SAT or the ACT and all that? Great question, Xavier. Ms. Montgomery. Um, okay, so uh, if you're planning to take the ACT or SAT on your own, that's a nationally set test date. And those are typically Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. And majority of our students test at the UNM uh, Valencia Campus Testing Center. Um, whenever you're registering for your test, you do get to pick where you want to test and what dates you want to test. Um, so some of that is gonna be up to you and the registration dates and deadlines but we will be giving the SAT to the junior class in the spring semester. Um, I don't have the test dates yet, uh, but that will be, the SAT will be given as your test for graduation um, and can be used as a college entrance exam. So that, that will be set, we just don't know those dates yet, but outside of that, you would, you would be selecting your own test date and location. All right, thank you. All right, well, thank you all. 
great questions you've asked, because I know some of us may have a question but not have asked it, and I bet some of the questions that were asked helped us that didn't ask a question. And again, just because we're ending this uh, speaker series today, if questions come up, please do not hesitate to send us an email. And we'll create, possibly create another Canvas page with the questions that you all have so other students can benefit from. And if you hear of any students that want to see this, this recording we will put up in Canvas or send it to, or send it to a student who's interested. So if they do want this information, have them contact us and we'll get them a recording of this information today. All right, go Jags. Thank you all for coming and spending your nine o'clock to 10.05, 9.05 to 10.05 hour with us this morning. And counselors and teachers, thank you so much for your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye, y'all.